All right, thanks, guys. So uh, I, I flew in all the way from uh, Helsinki, Finland, and uh, we're, um, my name is Villa Westerinen, um, the co-founder, CEO of Gray Area, and um, like I said, you know, we focus on location-based game. We have one game out called uh, Shadow Cities. How many of you guys know Shadow Cities? Have heard about it? Very cool. How many of you guys are thinking about? looking into location-based game design and what that might bring. Very cool. Nice. I hope all of you guys uh, will do that. Uh, <clears throat> what I want to talk about today is um, briefly um, what I think is a location-based game, what is Shadow Cities, because all of our learnings come from Shadow Cities, uh, the game we, we released in 2010. Um, and uh, how how the design how to design for location? There's there's uh, on the kind of face of it, it might look very similar to, uh, to an, an intuitive like yeah 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 you just incorporate it in and design as you would design any game, but there's a lot of stuff that that runs against that, which you know some of some of the stuff we have learned the hard way, some of the stuff uh, we kind of prepare for. And I, I want to share that with you. There's the eight uh, hard truths uh, about uh, how to design for location. I'll, I'll go through each one of those. Uh, there's, there's a lot more, but kind of, uh, you know, what I believe these you want to get right, I'm going to build out from there. Uh, I also address briefly, you know, why design for location? You know, what's so special about it, and why is it? such a big opportunity. So to, to jump into it, <coughs> I guess you know, all of us have different uh, points of view, what is a location-based game. And when we, you know, we, before we released Shadow Cities, we got emails and questions like, yeah, yeah, cool, cool idea, but what if it rains, right? So <coughs> a lot of people think it's something that you have to run around the city, uh, on, the, on the streets to play it. Uh, we view it a little bit differently um, based on our experience. So how I define it is a location-based mobile game, a game played on a, on a mobile handset that uses real-world location as a central part of the gameplay. Real-world location doesn't necessarily mean the absolute physical location, so the absolute lat, lat long, latitude longitude pair. And I'll get to this later, but... but uh, so uses the real world and uh, um, building the, the game around that. Shadow Cities, what is Shadow Cities? Uh, you know, a lot of you guys know what Shadow Cities is, which is great, but for those of you who don't, uh, really briefly, um, when you log into the game, it's a MMORPG for iOS, uh, a mobile game. Uh, what you see is kind of on the left side. So this is, if you would be physically in, uh, in Manhattan, in the meatpacking meat district, this is something you might see. So it is, uh, Shadow City is in and of itself, it's very abstract. Um, you see the kind of the Manhattan grid, so it's a map-based game, but you also see in real time the players around you. Shadow City is... Is is a, you can see play. It's a real time gameplay, uh, as well as synchronous. Uh, what you do in Shadow City is it it really is a territorial battle. You want to go out and conquer different neighborhoods, and I'll touch upon that later on. What that what that really means, and uh, you can also see kind of more strategic view of Manhattan. You know where different people are playing. What that means for your for your gameplay. But this is, is an action game, uh, PvP is a big part of it, extremely social, so you play with, with other people and, and uh, that really ties with, with the location. But I'll, I'll come to this, all of this uh, later on. So, and with Shadow Cities, what we wanted to do, we really wanted to kind of redefine what mobile game can be. It, it grew out of an idea 
Um, we're all big fans of games like World of Warcraft and grew up with those experiences. And you know, two, 2007, Steve came out with iPhone, and we saw that uh, you could actually deliver that kind of experiences to the end user. And uh, and and we looked at it, and <coughs> would there be any more cooler playboard than the than the uh, real city and the social structures that that kind of you know captivates? So um, and you know, New York Times coined very well what we wanted to do with with shadow cities, and that really is scratching the surface. So I think it's it's a completely new category of games. And we really haven't seen anything yet. So, so there's a massive, massive opportunity there. Uh, going into the, to how to design for location, so the, so the eight things I outlined. I think this is possibly the most crucial to understand. So if you don't remember anything else, please do remember this. Uh, critical mass. Um, and what it means in, in this context is that if you design a game where the physical, your physical location, the Lahlong pair, maps exactly um, where you are in the gameplay, and, and, and you, you don't have virtual movement, for example, uh, you know, it, it might become a really, really big challenge. Because what it really means is this is a map of Finland. This was. Um, we <coughs> kind of mapped this out before we launched it globally. And you can kind of see the, the brighter dots in there. And those are actually the gateways that have been contested. There's a lot of you know, gameplay activity there. Helsinki is kind of the southernmost tip. So there's a lot of activity there. But you know, what if you open the game like up north? There's not a whole lot of people around you. It might seem pretty, pretty empty, right? So you know you want to understand <coughs> how to design around this. How we did it in Shadow Cities, you know, if you open the game through your games, what uh, through your friends, what they can do in the game, they can open a gateway, if you will, a beacon in the game. You use a certain resource, but wherever you have friends, for example, if I would play the game right here, I would have friends in San Francisco, London, those people can open a gate for me to take part in the gameplay there. So we enable virtual movement through that. But, uh, but what that also means is that you don't want to completely lose the locations. So it, it really is a balance that you want to you wanna strike. So this is a, another way to look at it. If you map the game world literally to the real world, you know, you might have challenges. And with Shadow Cities, if you want to do something, because we wanted to take the deeper gameplay experiences that we have used to with some of the AAA games, for example, and bring that to mobile, we wanted to bring the, re the kind of the real-time gameplay in there. So, you'd, one, you take the location, and two, you take the real-time. So what that means is that you need to have a critical mass in every street corner of the world at all times, which is, you know, quite challenging requirement. So you wanna, you know, you, you wanna ease that somehow. Um, if the critical mass is not reached, the world seems empty. Other way around, on a on a you know screen that that we have come to know um, the mobile screen, uh, if there's a ton of people in one location, the clutter might become a problem. So there's other ways around it, instancing, so on and so forth. Um, this is a good representation of that. This is actually not gameplay. Do you guys know what this what what uh, uh, city this might be? Yeah, exactly. So you can kind of see Manhattan right there. All the blue dots are tweets. This is a, this is a guy called Eric Fisher put this together, and I think this is a great visualization. All the orange ones are Flickr photos taken. All the white ones are you know where those two two overlap. But you can already see that if you imagine Manhattan and the density of people playing games there. Uh, you know, when you're gonna start looking at the outskirts, what if you live there? What if you live in 
in Des Moines. So who do you play with? So that's something you, you, know, you want to address, so critical mass. Um, the second thing, and, and this is you know, a big thing when it comes to location-based games, um, is the sense of location. You want to have you want to design that into the games because that's that's you know one of the biggest appeals of the games and that's why location-based games you know beat other mobile games when it comes to monetization retention when designed right. And a, a good friend of mine, a fellow Finn, said that people don't just connect to each other; they connect through a shared object. So what that means is, for example, us here at Casual Connect, it's really easy to strike a conversation around games because we both know it. If we like ice hockey, if we like biking, oh, you have that bike, you know, where do you like to ride? Um, same thing applies. So <clears throat> location is really a strong driver. If you live in a neighborhood, um, it, it's really easy to connect over that shared object. So how we did it in, in Shadow Cities, part of the core loop of the game is to take over neighborhoods, right? So, and, and you know, <clears throat> once you take over a neighborhood, you live somewhere, there's Notting Hill in, uh, in London. If I would live there and on that street and it's, it's kind of my neighborhood and you would come and try to take it over, I'm like, no way, not happening. You know, I would, you know, pay money you know, see a lot of trouble to kind of retain my... It's almost like a football team. It, it becomes part of your identity, right? Um, all right. So what I call the E problem is, is the kind of the open world versus curated experiences. And uh, again, like when you are designing for you have the... The kind of the game world is, is not just one level, but it, it can be the whole world as we have in Shadows. It is, it's amazing. People can explore, uh, find new players, new places, but at the same time, it's very unpredictable. So EVE Online you know, hit their head hard into this thing. When people can do anything, it's super likely that they will do you know, anything and, and beyond. So, and, and that can be, you know, you can deliver amazing experiences for few people, but it's not as consistent as Angry Birds. You know, there's very few variables that can change or go wrong when you're shooting birds. Whereas, you know, with Shadow Cities, with Eve, you know, people do uh, all kinds of stuff. For example, around 9-11, without we knowing, people make a no-war zone. In, in Manhattan and gathered there and, uh, and built two beacons that shut up to the sky, kind of like the towers. Same thing, uh, we changed, uh, with Shadow Cities, we changed rules week to week on different campaigns, and people like this a lot. Uh, it's like service, but, but one week they didn't like it. They thought, this is the worst change you guys ever made, uh, and we want to show it. <coughs> so what they did, they, they um, kind of rallied a protest around our physical office, not in real world, but in game world. And, you know, we had never seen it, and, and there was thousands of people in exactly the same place, which, uh, you know, all of a sudden become, you know, a huge requirement for, for our technology and all that. So, you know, stuff happens, and you want to understand that. It can be a, you know, massive benefit, to have this ability, but but when you have the real world and you want to kind of use that uh, and what it brings with it, uh, you want to be smart with it. So think about those those issues. Uh, this is a good example. This is in Paris, France. You know, these are people just hovering, you know, chatting what to do, where to go, and uh, and when people see each other in real time around their neighborhood. Uh, you, you can kind of understand that this is not a Disneyland experience where it's extremely curated and we hold your hand all the way through. It, all the balls are different people, by the way. Um, it, but uh, but it, it, they, you know, the players really kind of, they, they make the gameplay. Uh, so where, where do people play location-based games? And this, 
Uh, this, go, this is one of the not necessarily most intuitive things um, when people think about location-based games, but if you have a great game, people want to play it most of the day, right? You know, a lot of minutes, hours, and, uh, and where if you break down where you spend most of your time, it actually is home and at work, right? So, you know, that's where people play, and it, it, it goes... Same applies with location-based games. And, and this is, you know, an also an area where you want to enable people to kind of move around virtually to an extent, uh, not tie them um, to, a, to a physical location because then they would only be able to play at their office. Um, playing with your neighbors, this can be, you know, it can be amazing as long as you understand the design for it. There's a macro play, the, you know, the different quests to go all over the city, all over the world, uh, what not. But, but some of the, you know, some of the best experiences we have seen is, is people build this routine, you know. <clears throat> you have a family and a work and you come to home and 10 o'clock you always open the, open the game and you kind of build your... Uh, base around where you live, for example, and there's always this one guy down the street who tries to take over your stuff. And this, you know, people get possessed over this and who owns the street. And and uh, but at the same time, it, it really gives a new meaning to the neighborhood. You normally know your spouse, uh, your kids, maybe next door neighbor, but not a whole lot others. But you know, through this game, because you see them there you know, day in, day out, and, uh, you know, start chatting with them. It gives a whole new meaning and layer, and this is a great driver of retention and monetization if you, if you design it, design it well. Uh, something, something that uh, goes without saying, but it's super important, the data set. So geodata, um, you know, whether you use Google Maps, whether you use open source data stacks, whether you use Foursquare API, you know, before you go into it, know what you can use and how you're going to use it and, you know, build your game or design your game based on that. Um, the infrastructure, battery, positioning, latency, um, this is an area, for example, you know, latency, you can't do a whole lot, you know, it, it's just there, but you can design around it. In Shadow Cities, you cast a spell, and uh, it might take a while, but uh, it doesn't feel unnatural. You know, for some, it works really fast, but if you're playing on an elevator, it might take a while. So, uh, but, but by designing around it, people feel a natural part of the gameplay. And, and feel really good about it. Uh, same thing, you know, <clears throat> because we saw that they play at home and at work. What most people do, they actually plug the iPhone into the charger, and then they let it run, and then they hear when there's a battle, and then they engage. So you actually, you know, that it, you don't run out of battery even though you let it run all day. So also something to think about. So they have that possibility uh, when they play the game, they design for it. Um, lastly, the, the kind of the social graph. Uh, if you have, for example, in sh like in Shadow Cities, you have two teams, and, uh, and you start to map the social graph on location, uh, on some parts it might look really good, on some parts not so much. And, and there's not one answer to the, this um, challenge either, but something you want to think about. So, for example, the, if you have, you know, say, nine architects, one animator on your neighborhood level, kind of, the gameplay kind of sucks. It's not great for either one, even if you have, it's evened out on city and country level. But is it any better if it's evened down on a neighborhood level and the gameplay is really compelling? But if it's tilted on a city and country level, you know, the end goal or the, or the, you know, the campaign you're playing, that might get all messed up. So again, something and you know, one way around this is don't have two teams, you know, have, have more than two or however you want to play it, but, but something to think about because it, it, you know, it's unforgiving. 
So those were like the, the you know, really briefly the, the eight um, design restrictions or directions you want to think about, which doesn't necessarily always um, appear uh, when you do non-location-based games. But, but uh, I also wanted to really briefly address why would you ever design for location? Why is it so compelling? So we believe that at a gray area, we want to build a global game layer. Uh, we believe it's a whole new category of games that can disrupt a lot. What you need for it is you need to understand the design. You know, what is it to design for location? Um, you need to have the data, right? The data set, geodata, um, and, and, you know, understand that and then design your game around that. And thirdly, um, the devices need to be powerful, powerful enough. And all those three are, you know, coming together right now. So, so you start to see uh, opportunities to build those deeper gameplay experiences that we have used to on, you know, whether it's AAA games, World of Warcraft, all those, uh, you know, bring those on a mobile handset and, and create real worlds, game worlds, not just, you know, single player, super curated experiences. And this is what location enables. And this kind of coins it. Don Norman is an uh, is, uh, academic and a user experience designer. And he said that we grow to love the objects that connect us to other people, create meaning, and remind us that we are alive. And I think location does exactly that. Because it, is, it really taps into those emotions and uh, enables that conversation and that level of social uh, interaction that isn't necessarily there without it. So, to sum up, uh, these were the eight points. We won't go through them separately. It's just for you, for your reference. Um, you know, remember those. Even if you don't have solution for each one of them, kind of have them in the back of your mind and think about shadow cities when you kind of um, design your your own game. And, and please do. I, I think it's a massive opportunity and. Uh, we haven't seen anything yet. Thank you. So if we have you know time for questions, I'm I'm happy to answer if you guys have any. There's one? Yep, sir. Most people, uh, the, the question is that where people kind of, if I understood it right, uh, pushed back, um, you know, or, or um, if, if they um, didn't jump right into it because, you know, they might not have 3G connection and, well, did I understand it correctly? Yeah, exactly. was that a concern? Yeah, was that a concern? It was a concern, but what we found out is that the you know gameplay through 3G actually works quite quite well. So even if you have the um, the kind of that we have algorithmically generated the whole world, there's very little data that you have to download. It's actually a lot less than with your normal mobile phone game. Uh, so you know it, it. We thought about it, and that was one of our biggest concerns, but it didn't materialize. All right, one more. Sir. Um, I noticed your, I guess that was a survey that said most of your players are playing from home or work. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, were you surprised by that probably? And what was your reaction to it when you saw that? Yeah, we, we were surprised by that. And, and uh, you know, it, it's something that uh, a lot of people go into think that it's super cool to explore new places and that's what location-based games is, but 99% play actually exactly where they spend their day in. And 
and you know, uh, I guess fortunately for us, Shadow Cities, um, you know, worked quite well for that kind of gameplay. But uh, we were definitely surprised for it, and and you know, it, we have taken that heart and and keep my keep that in mind. So you might have, you know, it, it might seem really cool to have when you go into a new place and open up the clients and see what's around you, but that is marginal edge case. So, you know, 75, 80% of people play the game where they spend most of their day. And we look at the radius, how people move during their day, and most people, it's surprisingly small. You know, home, office, grocery store, and again. All right, thanks guys. That's location-based games.